Hi, and welcome back to Classic MGB. Now, the video we did on basic MGB electric seemed to go down pretty well, so we thought we'd follow it up with a look at the MGB ignition system. Before we start though, a word of warning. The ignition system can generate really big voltages and can give you a hefty belt, so be very careful touching the thick wires going from the coil to the distributor and from the distributor to the spark plugs. That said, let's take a closer look at how the MGB's ignition system works. Now, most people know that a basic ignition system is designed to provide a spark to the correct cylinder at exactly the right moment to ignite the fuel-air mixture and force the piston down. So simple. Well, on the face of it, it is. But it does require accurate timing to ensure everything happens at exactly the right time. The ignition system consists of two separate sections the low tension or low voltage section and the high tension section. However, a couple of components, the coil and the distributor, are actually part of both sections. But it's pretty easy to see which is which, as the high tension cables, as we've said above, are much thicker. So let's go through exactly what happens when you turn the ignition key. First of all, power is applied, and this allows current to flow into the primary winding of the coil, as we've said before through the points in the distributor and back to the battery via the earth. The contact breaker points are simply a low voltage switch that switches on and off as the distributor spins. As the distributor rotates, the points switch off the current in the primary winding of the coil, and this, as we've said before, causes the magnetic field in the coil to collapse. This generates a large voltage in the secondary winding of the coil. Secondary winding is connected to the centre of the distributor cap, which then distributes the spark to the correct spark plug. Of course, because the distributor is a single component, correct ignition timing for the points and the spark distribution can be achieved by simply rotating the distributor. However, there's a bit of a gotcha. The fuel-air mixture doesn't burn instantly, so the ignition has to be advanced a little, meaning that the spark occurs just before the piston reaches the very top of its travel, known as top dead centre. Of course, if it's advanced too much, the engine will either simply not run or run very roughly. According to the workshop manuals, the standard MGB ignition advance is 32 degrees at 3000 revs. This is known as the static advance. <laughs> However, it's not as simple as that. Because as the engine revs rise, the advance needs to change. So how is this accomplished? Well, two systems built into the distributor take care of this. The first is a system of weights which move under centrifugal force of the distributor spinning and alter the timing. And the second is the vacuum advance, which uses the vacuum in the inlet manifold to alter the timing. The combination of these parts makes sure that the timing is optimised at whatever engine speed, ensuring smoothness and drivability. Of course, in a modern car, this is accomplished using sensors and sophisticated electronics, and this inevitably leads to very efficient engines. But of course, this technology wasn't available in the 1960s, when the MGB was born. These are usually referred to as electronic ignition, but they're not the same as electronic ignition systems that are often retrofitted to MGBs. Most simple electronic ignition systems that are fitted to MGBs don't usually have this level of sophistication and normally work in exactly the same way as a points-based system, except that the mechanical points are replaced with an electronic sensor mounted in the distributor, which instructs the electronic ignition module to switch the current. This usually improves the quality of the spark and overall reliability of the system, and doesn't require the replacement of points as they wear out. That said, many owners prefer to stick with points as they can be easily replaced. But if an electronic ignition system fails, it's probably a call to the breakdown service. One other thing, and that's something known as a ballast resistor. What's it for, and why do you need it? Well, let's think about what happens when the car's started. The starter motor takes a huge amount of power, so the voltage to the ignition system drops to about 10 volts. This means that it's important for the coil to perform well at this voltage, otherwise the car wouldn't start. Of course, the problem is that once the engine is running, the voltage goes back up to 12 volts, which many coils don't like. So a second connection to the coil replaces the first, which includes a ballast resistor to ensure the coil operates at the correct voltage. Another important component is the condenser, also known as a capacitor. This is wired in parallel with the points, 
and its job is to prevent arcing across the points when they open and help collapse the magnetic field faster, making a stronger spark. So that's more than enough of the theory. Let's dive into the engine bay and take a look at what we've been talking about. Right, so we're underneath the bonnet of my 1973 MGB GT. Let's have a look at the ignition system and let's start with the distributor. Well, the distributor, as we've said, is in two parts. It's the high tension part and the low tension part, and they come apart. I've actually undone the clips because they're a little bit fiddly to do. So this is the high tension part. You can see the four contacts. So what happens is the rotor arm, which we'll look at in a minute, spins around and at the, exactly the right point connects to there, connects and sends the high voltage high tension charge to the correct spark plug. So that's it. And the, the charge actually comes from this center point, which is spring loaded and attached to the rotor arm, which is spinning around, as you can see here. So if we look at the bottom half of the distributor, that's normally where the contact points are. But of course, this is electronic ignition. So it's got a sensor in there rather than the contact breaker points that we've talked about. Um, so that rotor spins around very fast delivering the high voltage charge to each of the cylinders. So here, this is how this high voltage charge is produced. It's used the coil. And so the coil we've talked about takes a low tension signal. And then when that signal is broken, it generates a high tension current inside the coil, which is then delivered to each of the cylinders. And we also mentioned a ballast resistor. There he is. And we've explained exactly what that is. So that's what it's like underneath the bonnet for the ignition system. So there you go, a brief rundown of the MGB's ignition system. Hopefully we've managed to explain some of the concepts and practicalities of it. And if you found it useful, we'd really appreciate it if you could click on the thumbs up icon and also share the video any way you think it could be useful. Of course, it would be great if you could subscribe to the channel as well, because all these things help YouTube get our content to a wider audience. As always, many thanks for watching. Take care.